Alrighty. This morning we're going to talk a little bit about one of the biggest questions I get. And that is what in the heck makes me go to these spots and hunt in the first place. Yeah, I know we're not really getting rich here or anything, but we're finding gold and it's a beautiful camp area. And I know I'm in a place where I'm not trespassing. And I start out most of my journeys, if I'm not on a club claim, which we are this time, by uh, checking online on a couple of different programs I use, um, Gold Maps Online for whatever state, and uh, Minecash.com for uh, as close as I can get to the current claim holder, since the BLM site is probably still down with the government being shut down and all. Yippee. Um, and then I do research. I learn where the gold was found, how it was found, who found it, when it was found, and whether or not there's clubs in the area. And this area in the Harquahalla Mountains where we are, well, I am this weekend, and we were last weekend, Tammy and I, is in all the books um, on Arizona hard rock mining and whatnot. There's one of them. And you can look up the history of the mine. You can look up just about anything you need to know to get started in an area, whether there was placer gold involved with it and whatnot. It tells you the types of rocks and minerals, and I could go into all the types of rocks and minerals for you, but I think that would only add to confusion. And I'm not a geologist, but I've learned enough geology to get me through um, figuring out what something is and what it might be and if it's associated with gold or not and how old the rock would or would not be and i really like this book right here um, there's a lot of different brands of rocks and minerals books that you can get but having one is really necessary out here i mean you pick up that rock out there you go what is this well you bring it home and you identify it simple as that bring it back to camp and identify it it's kind of fun to do and uh you know what kind of uh, rocks and minerals you're dealing with. And we're going to go out and hunt a little bit today. Like I said, we're at a club claim here. So when I first get to a club claim or a new area, being a nugget shooter as my primary uh, form of prospecting and gold hunting, I look for dry wash tailings from the old timers, dry washers, to the new timers, dry washers. On this club claim, uh, not a lot of videos you see for me. You see a lot of the uh, new tailings and the older tailings. And the way you tell the older tailings piles is most of the fine material from the front of the dry washer will be long washed away um, or partially washed away. And you can pretty much gauge the age of that pile by looking at the uh, gravels that were sorted by the dry washer and seeing what's left and what's not left. And it can give you a good idea how old those tailings are. I mean, if there's bushes growing in them and stuff, they've been there a long time. And those are the ones I like to find. And uh, hey, we got a bee coming to visit. Those are the ones I like to find. And we're gonna go out this morning a little bit. I had some problems with the power supply for my GP uh, 3500, so I won't be using it today. And it's Sunday and I'm gonna be going home pretty quick, so. I'm going to go out here with the gold monster and hunt a little bit around camp. And I've got a couple nuggets in this area, so that's what we're going to do today. And I just wanted to add a little bit of stuff for you all to uh, help you learn new spots. But one of the best ways is to join clubs. And I've heard people say, well, this or that club's too expensive. Well, what's 100 bucks a year when you can go out there and find easily that much gold on a lot of these club claims? And... Plus the education you get is priceless. You're on an area, um, you pay attention to the rocks, you pay attention to what the old timers were doing when they were dry washing, where they were working. And you gotta remember, they couldn't get all that with a dry washer. There's plenty of nuggets up on the hillsides, the banks, um, above the washes, and elsewhere. And that's what I go after. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go out that door back there and do a little hunting before I uh, load up the rest of the way and go home and try to shoot this bee out of the house here. We've got a pretty good target right here. 
right down in the bedrock. We're going to have a look. Sorry about the extra noise there. Well, that came right out. Yeah, it's usually not a good sign. Hard to catch. Hot spot on this coil is right about there. So it's telling me it's right in here. I got it out of the darn crack. Just gotta get the dirt that's got the target in the scoop. Bedrock rough. Got it. Alrighty. Let's see what Mother Nature had hidden down in that bedrock. Wherever it is, it's mighty tiny and mighty loud. That's not a good sign. Yeah, it's not a good sign. Yeah, a little piece of iron. A little piece of iron right there. Oh well. Thought we might have had a live one. Well, just a little bit more stuff to pack up and I'm heading back home. Went in for a, uh, geez, good three hours or so this morning. And dug a bunch of bullets and a bunch of BBs and a little bits of iron and you know, the routine. So, next trip we're gonna go somewhere different. And there's still gold here. I'm sure we'll come back here another day. It sure was a fun trip. Both last week with Tammy and Rick, and then this weekend flying solo. But uh, we got a little nugget this trip. That's always good to get at least one, so I don't have to go home skunk, because boy, Saturday and today were brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. This area's been picked over quite a bit, and uh, I'm sure I left a couple nuggets for you guys if you're ever inclined to come out this way or join Jack's Club or whatever. So, I'm going to finish loading up here, my friends, and uh, we're going to call this a wrap for the second trip to the Harkwahala Mountains. What an amazing place. Whoops, did I say that before? But it is. And so for now, my friends, next shooter out.